Hey guys, if I was going to make my own version of Spider-Man, this is what well it would be. First of all, Spider-Man would have a it would be the amazing it would be the amazing Spider-Man suit mixed with Tom Holland's um uh merged suit in No Way Home and a little bit of his homecoming suit. His villains would be um Technically, they change. It would be Venom and Coinage, but then it like um, Spider Man like webs of flashbang, um, to um Venom and Coinage when they're near each other. So then, uh, like you know, it's like ah, and it, and it, and you can see like the person inside, which is Ned, but it's too fast for Spider Man to see. So and then the Coinage accidentally fuses with Venom. Um, and then it would be, um, uh, Dr. Octopus. Of course, it would be, like, the game version mixed with Tobey Maguire's. Um, and then it would be the Rhino. It would be the game one mixed with a little bit of, uh, um, Andrew Garfield's. And then it would be Green Goblin. Um, uh, the Green Goblin mixed with like his iconic comic book version mixed with uh, Tobey Maguire's, and then it would be a uh, Shocker, his original comic suit mixed with No Way Home's version of him. And so that would be like. And then Moon Knight would be one of the villains. He would just, you know, turn on the villains. He just go, go he's just there, you know, trying to help Spider Man. Um. So yeah, and uh, um, basically the final battle is on one of Fisk's properties. Basically, um, and yeah, and the and he's fighting them and he and this vision of spider-man has like spider has like a multiversal watch that allows him to go through universes really fast so um yeah he defeats the rhino after hitting him a lot and a lot of explosions and dr octopus like by grabbing like when dr octopus is trying to hit him like like he webs up the arm and then he hits um rhino instead so the rhino is defeated and he threw a bunch of parkour and running on dr octopus's arms he slowly breaks the chip here and the chip is like um the one in toby Maguire's spider-man mixed with the game one and he hear that breaks so he's finished um electro is the only one who escapes um and then green goblin is is actually killed by electro like electro does a final blow um and then this vision of uh carnage and you know you know them their weakness is their weakness is this green electricity basically um uh what was it uh green goblin had like this little green energy around his like exploding balls and then electro accidentally absorbed some of it and it was and it was really strong but it but it was also very deadly to carnage and venom and it was slowly killing um him to the more he used it so dr octopus took out that version of the energy and he gave him a modified electromagnifier controller which would generate way more electricity the normal kind a uh, green goblin is hit with a wrecking ball with carnage because like moon knight goes with spider-man on the final second and then he controls a crane and then he that goes through the building and it hits green goblin and carnage and uh, um green goblin is lodged into an into another crane and he's stuck in there and spider-man webs him up too just in case 
and then um uh, carnage manages to go to one of the lower floors of the building and then we see that it's that generator that fisks and minions um, managed to get a copy of that canister and then they had just made a generator pr to produce it and sell it to make way more money and so then spider-man uses that has his advantage and then he sees ned sticking out like you can see his head and a little bit of his chest right here and then the rest is just a carnage and venom like stuck in, stuck on him on the floor and venom is defeated um and then um uh, spider-man sees the generators about to blow so he grabs ned out and then he activates his multiversal watch and he sets to go to miles morales's universe but because of that green electricity it transforms it teleports him to the game reality so he, so he, he quickly makes an anti serum and Ned is in the hospital. And then he, re and, but because of that electricity, it broke his watch. So, um, yeah, and then he finds the old lab and then he uses that to fix the multiversal watch and upgrade it to. And and then when Ned is cured, he go and he teleports. Um, and puts Ned back into their reality, but Electro from that universe, uh, ha quickly goes there because the because he can sense, uh, electricity and he senses a strong power surge, and he recently escaped. Because um, Dr. Octopus in that universe had one last fail safe where if he was captured, um, um, if he would put, he would give uh, the, uh, he had injected Electro with a serum where if he was captured, he could transform the electricity and get out. So he senses that electricity and he sees the remaining green electricity and then he grabs it. No, no, he absorbs it. And then he calls all the other villains because, like, this could be a potential new upgrade. But then he's re he remembers that they're in jail. So he makes them, so he replaces his regular electricity with that green electricity and he frees them. And they go there. But then, um, instead of that green electricity, uh, he um somehow, uh, he, Electro absorbs a canister of new form, one of the only ones left, and this causes an overreaction in his suit, and they all teleport to um to the reality that I was just talking about. So Spider Man has to defeat them, and he defeats them quite easily. Because he realizes that the green electricity's weakness is new form, so he uh, uses that as uh, so he mixes that with his webbing. So it's his webbing will have new form electricity all around it, and he defeats them. Um, and he sends them back to their universe. Um, but uh, he then sees that. Dr. Octopus made another version of new form and it exploded and that there and that there could be more. So he tries to go and track it down and he sees the like a truck full of it uh, loaded underground. And then he tries to disable it, but instead of that happening, it explodes. And he's like trying to escape but he, but he's about to die. And then Moon Knight tries to stop the electricity from flowing into Spider-Man's body, and he does. But then the multiversal watch explodes, and it and it uh, transforms Spider-Man, and, and it transforms Moon Knight to another reality. And then it transforms Spider-Man's consciousness into another reality. 
And then that could be like a side thing on G Disney Plus. And then we see in the wreckage that Venom mixed with Carnage crawls up to Spider Man and takes control of the body. And uh, uh and then there's and then near the end of the next movie, um where uh, uh the villain is actually doc is actually Doctor Superior my version of Superior or Doctor Octopus. His metal is reinforced and he doesn't have any electricity like any of that. It's all psychedelic connected to his brain. Um his reaction times are five times faster than this version of Spider Man. Uh his arms are way stronger and if Spider Man tries to punch his body, Doctor Octopus's body, um, there's these little latches around his arms that'll like put an invisible force field on his body. So like only when Spider Man p tries to punch him, it appears. So Spider Man tries to punch Doctor Octopus in the stomach, and there's a force field. And you see the blue force field, and then yeah, and yeah. And it's really, and he's really strong. And she, and, and, um, we see that Carnage mixed with Venom went crazy. Because Spider-Man has all those memories and, and, and Venom and Carnage are having a trouble, have, are having trouble taking care of it. Knowing that, hey, these villains will just escape. So Carnage goes on a killing spree and then kills Rhino, Electro, no, Rhino, Electro, and all those, and Dr. Octopus is the only one to escape, and he modified his suit to, like, fix that. So he becomes my vision of superior, Dr. Octopus. And then they're about to battle, and then they do battle. Um... But, um, then Spider-Man gains, put his back into his body, and he is fighting for control, and he wins. <clears throat> and he manages to stop him. It, uh, it is very tough, though. And then, wanna know what happens? Dark Octopus is freed. Basically, Dr. Octopus made an alliance to a team called the Underground. It's just like the it's just like a live action version of what in Miles Morales. And basically they were supervising the fight. And if uh, Dr. Uh, Octopus was ever like, you know, a, a, a stopped, they would jump in to try to help him. And Spider-Man is fighting them. <clears throat> right? And then one of them puts on glasses. And it's like Edith. They manage to hack into Tony Stark's satellites. And then they put drones, invisible drones. And then they make it look like Doctor Strange has disappeared. And he's like fighting him, right? He's fighting Spider-Man, even though it's not real. He, it's like Doctor Strange is right here. He's invisible. And then a hologram version of him is fighting Spider-Man. And while while that's happening, Doc uh, Octopus escapes, and Spider Man manages to hold them off before the police come and shoot the villains down. Like Spider Man, there's ten of them. Spider Man takes out like uh, all of them, but three, and then the cops show up, and then they just shoot down the um uh, um the remaining ones. And then Doctor Strange sees this, and then he tries to battle him. Right? But then it turns out that Doctor Strange also has his own version of Spider-Man's watch. It's made by the underground and him. So he puts it on and it gives him the knowledge of the multiverse and what's and what every single move Doctor Strange is gonna do. So he uses that to his advantage and then he defeats Doctor Strange.
But then he, but then Dr. Octopus realizes, hey, there's another weakness because this watch could be broken. So he puts the watch in his brain. He like, he like, like he did to his Neuralink. But yeah, so that way, he, that way he doesn't need the watch anymore. <clears throat> and then Doctor Strange breaks into Oz. Uh, no, no, yeah, Doctor Strange breaks into Oscorp to try and find something to battle um Doctor Octopus with, because surely the world's richest company would have would have would have probably made a device to stop him. But what he finds is something worse. It's dark, it's dark, it's Mr. Negative. Basically, Oscorp and Roxxon and Sable all banded together to try and create the most powerful thing alive to try and stop Spider-Man. But he almost escaped. So they put him in a container. So Doctor Strange up, so yeah. But something weird happens. The timeline is broken by Moon Knight. You know, Moon Knight had disappeared. Well, Moon Knight didn't come back to his reality. This vision of Moon Knight didn't come back to his reality. So he just broke in the multiverse. And then... And and then a reality where Dr. S where Dr. Negative escaped uh, his tube merges into this one. And then, it, and it completely merges. So whatever happened in that reality happened in this one too. And vice versa. Kinda. No, actually not vice versa. So yeah, Dr. Mr. Negative is free. And then you are about to do, and then Spider-Man defeats Dr. Negative. Until a drop of Venom and Coinage gets on him. And then he and then Venom and Coinage bring him back to life. So now it's Dr. Negative mixed with Venom and Coinage, like infused with his body too, with Dr. Octopus with five times faster reaction skills and no weakness here and reinforced arms and a force field on his body along with the underground who he's teamed up with that have access to advanced technology that not even the military has yet that also have drones that and and dr octopus also knows about the multiverse so what what so dr octopus um makes another vision of the watch and he hacks the underground's tech to fuse their tech with their brains. And then he inputs a virus he made. It's not really a virus. It just gives them the underground, the knowledge of the multiverse. Then infiltrates the AI that's connected to their brain. And it just gives them loads of information about the multiverse. So now the underground know, also know uh, way more advanced moves too. But there is a special uh, signal in a rep that 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 gets uh uh that gets traced down by Martin Lee, so he abs so he creates a device to he creates a device to absorb the signal. It saves the signal, and then it absorbs the signal. No, it absorbs the signal and saves it, and then he figures out what it is. And it's something about the multiverse. So he connects it to his mind. He releases it. And he learns about the multiverse. So they begin their moves to collapse the multiverse into one reality. And at this point, the Avengers are getting involved. You know... 
the Avengers are getting involved. And they try to defeat him, but they can't because they know every move. They know about the multiverse and they know about the, everything that's going to happen. So they know every single one of every single one of their moves. So they use that as their advantage. But then Spider-Man makes a reality teller. Can also tell the future of, the real, of, of this reality. And he decides to do something that backfired before. He creates a robotic version. That also has um access to multiverse. Like it's like it's that uh, it's like Ultron, because that because that's not supposed to happen. And when it happens, he sees the reality around a Ultron. This vision of Ultron, kinda like glitching out. So he sets him to defeat Doctor Octopus. But Doctor Octopus uh, also has the underground trying to hack Ultron. And at this point, the war comes. And, it, and then he realizes what's going on. So he decided to put his fate in Spider-Man's hands. And he gives Ultron three of the Infinity Stones. And at this point, he is way strong. He is strong. And he is actually about to kill Dr. He's actually about to kill Dr. Octopus. Right? <clears throat> right? It would seem like that. But then he gets hacked by the underground. And they accidentally fuse his knowledge with Doc, with Doctor Octopus's. So now he's just, now all trying to just glitching out the, with all the knowledge that um, uh, Doctor Octopus has. He's just glitching out. And then we see a huge green explosion happen, and then we see that. Um, we see something. Apparently, Fisk was working on a multiversal project to make his empire even empire even bigger. And that explosion activated that thing. Basically, it's like the thing in uh, Mars Morales, that thing that has two beams, like, instead of just one, and it's like this, so it shoots up, and it activates. And then it, and then you can see almost 5 million realities in the sky. And then there, and then you see the, that collapsing, like breaking apart. <clears throat> and then Ultron, you, this version of Ultron uses all his power to shoot up. And then he uses all the Infinity Stone's powers from all the different universes to, to contain it. To not, to like, so like it's breaking like, poof, poof, you see in the sky the multiverse is breaking apart. Ultron manages to use all his power to put... To reconnect it permanently. Unless it gets broken. Like by someone else. And then. But the Infinity Stone's powers are depleted. And so is his power. So we see him falling down. And he falls down on that device. And then it seems like. All hope is lost. But then Ultron. With his last dying breath. Fuses with it. And then he contains that multiverse explosion that was about to go off. But the underground still have some control of him. So they explode him. They activate his stuff destruct, which unleashes the multiversal explosion, which merges all the multiverses. All the realities and stuff together in a one single one. And then we see the bright light. While well, Spider-Man tries his best to stop it, but ultimately fails. 
and then we see everything gets stuck into a white ball. The end. And then, yeah, that's it for now.